guys welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is hof so the second semester for this year is almost starting so i just thought that i should make a video about how much i spend as a student in south korea how much you spend in korea is very dependent on of course your spending habits and where you stay so where you stay is mainly going to affect your rent and your utility bills and management fees because most times in korea if you are renting a place you need to pay management fee in addition to your rent if you are staying in dorms you are most likely going to spend a different amount as compared to if you are staying out of the dorms on your own so anyway yeah I am going to be sharing how much I spend in a month in this video and I hope it gives you a clue on how much you may be able to spend when you come to Korea as a student. So I moved out of Seoul to another city which is in the North Gyeongsang province and it is meant to be cheaper I think but I haven't noticed a big difference in my spending. So let's start with the basics mainly rent and utility bills um for me i stay outside of school i do not stay in the school dormitory so i am renting a house near campus my rent is three hundred and thirty thousand. that is inclusive of the maintenance fee so my rent is three hundred thousand, and there is an extra thirty thousand that i have to pay every month for maintenance Maintenance fees in Korea are collected for like cleaning, like garbage, because they have to always like um, come and collect your garbage. And I don't know what else. <laughs> Basically that. So maintenance costs are compulsory. When you are looking for a house, they will most times be included. Like they tell you this is how much your rent is and this is your maintenance cost. So my main maintenance fees are 30,000. I have to pay them every month in addition to my rent. My current house is bigger than the one I had in Seoul. And so I made a video about my previous house in Seoul, my previous one room. You can check it out. I'm going to leave it in the description where I did a house tour. And that house was actually 350,000, but I got a discount and I was paying 250 this current house of mine is bigger than the one i had in seoul so even though i am paying more rent i also have more space and i am near school in a very good neighborhood so i like this house yeah you cannot get a house of this size at three hundred and thirty thousand in seoul and near school that's why i say that your expenditure is going to be very dependent on where you stay and actually this city has houses that are cheaper than these like 150 to 100,000 but they are not near school so that means i'd have to take a bus which i am not so in love with <laughs> i'd have to like think about that so that's how much i pay for rent 330,000 every month i think it's fair enough um for the size and location this house i think would be more than four hundred thousand if it was in seoul so besides rent the other constant costs are utility bills and utility bills that includes water electricity internet and gas so for me my house comes with free internet and free water so that means I do not have to pay for them every month. So I just have to pay for electricity and gas. So while living in Korea, I think it's important to know which of your appliances use what, like either electricity or gas, because it helps you plan on, let me, let's say, how much you should be using, like, so that you don't leave the aircon blasting all the time if you are planning to, like, budget for your electricity something like that so for me in this house i have the air conditioner and the lights only for electricity and the gas the cooking stoves and the heater for gas 
in my previous house everything was electricity so i didn't need to pay for gas gas prices seem to be higher than electricity so you need to be like mindful about that especially with the heating in winter the gas your gas fees may like really really be high because you need to keep warm and the gas prices are high compared to electricity so anyway for me now that it's summer i spend around twenty thousand for each because i cook mainly two times a week over that's over the weekend and maybe sometimes during the week and i'm not using the heater that much right now since it's summer and yeah so i am not exceeding twenty thousand now that it's summer but during winter i was spending a lot <laughs> yeah i was spending more than thirty thousand and sometimes forty thousand on just gas and then electricity has always been like less than 30 i think the maximum i paid was around 25 for let's say the previous month i spent eighteen thousand on gas and how much did i spend i think around twelve thousand on electricity so that's still within my budget of twenty thousand for each yes yeah, so i'll consider forty thousand for utility bills the next constant is health insurance which is compulsory for all people <laughs> in korea like foreigners or natives students or not we all have to pay health insurance i pay thirty five thousand 300 something but most students pay around i think seventy thousand. for me i got a waiver because i was doing my previous part-time job for more than a year so because of that i was able to get a waiver and i pay half of the normal health insurance fee actually there are students that pay more than that <laughs> so whichever your bill is you need to be considerate about like how much you have to be paying every month and include it in your costs so for me i pay thirty five thousand one, approximately thirty six thousand one per month for my health insurance health insurance is very important because if you do not pay it it will affect your visa process like your visa issuance and your visa extension process so it's very important that you pay it even if you won't be going to hospital you know it's not nice but you have to pay it uh, the next is let's say transportation my transportation costs have really dropped ever since i moved out of seoul when i was living in seoul last year i used to spend i think around a hundred thousand on transport only every month that was before they introduced the climate card i don't know if you've heard about the climate card in korea but it's a new card that has been introduced and you just pay around i think it's fifty thousand a month and it gives you access to all like to most buses and subway stations for is it sixty five thousand oh yeah so the climate card is like sixty five thousand korean one so that's a really good price but it started when i was living so so i didn't really get to use it when i was in seoul yeah my average transportation cost was like a hundred thousand because i used to have to go to work like to and fro but right now i am staying near school so i just walk i spend less than twenty thousand right now if i am not moving to another city like if i'm not taking the train because trains are like 17,000 and above. So if I'm just like moving around my city, I spend less than 20,000 for a month, which is really nice because transport used to take a lot of my money. Yeah, so if you are living in Seoul and you have to like commute every day, you'll need to consider that. A journey in Korea, like uh, let's say bus or subway, you can spend around like from 1,400 to 2800 it's in that range so depending on what you're taking what kind of bus what kind of subway the transfers you'll take i think it will most probably fit within that amount so you can budget with that 
Mm, that's the average price of transportation in Korea. If you have to go to school every day, just factor in those costs and you'll be able to find out how much you may spend every month. I think the next important thing for me is eating. Um, I spend the most money after rent on eating, I think, because groceries in Korea are expensive. So, but for me, I mainly shop on Kupang for almost everything. I haven't seen a significant change ever since I moved out of Seoul in this because I shop online for groceries and even like the dry food. So the costs have kind of stayed the same. I spend around, I think, 100 to 150,000 on groceries and let's say eating out and ordering in i may spend around 100,000 a month uh, but that's like 100,000 is like five times let's say because most stores if you are ordering in most stores have like a minimum amount you can order so it's like you cannot order below 14,000 or you cannot order below 20,000 so if the minimum order is supposed to be 20,000 you are going to have to order in for like five times if your budget is 100,000 generally on food in total I spend around 250 so for me I buy the groceries and most times cook which <laughs> so you have to do your math and see what is like better for you because when you if you can like calculate everything and see that I am spending three hundred thousand on food and I have to cook, why do I have to cook in the first place if I'm spending all this money? Why, why don't I just buy food? You know. So whichever works for you, you do your math and work with what works for you. So for me, I prefer cooking my own food because ah, I'm not in love with the school food nowadays. I kind of got tired of it. Uh, but it was actually affordable because the cafeteria food is like 3,001 and 5,500 if you eat from the professor's cafeteria. So it's not a bad price, but yeah, it doesn't work for me that much. So I decide to cook every weekend. So I buy groceries from Kupang and I cook. Miscellaneous costs, um, like let's say shopping um pie offering and those other small small things that come around that i may not have planned normally they may cost me like 100 to 150 thousand let's say so for me in general i spend around 700 to 800 thousand a month my major expenses are mainly food and rent so as a student i think you'll need to factor in other costs such as printing if you do not have like a free printing place in school you may need to buy textbooks i do not buy textbooks now but i bought textbooks a lot in my undergrad and each book was more than twenty-five thousand, which was annoying because you just use them for a semester and if you are part of school clubs you normally have to pay the monthly fees just some extra costs like for fun meeting with friends birthdays gifts you know all those things may all come in and yeah i think you may spend around you can spend around 1 million as a student if you are living around in korea and of course if you are staying inside dorms you don't have to worry about electricity you don't have to worry about gas and all the other utility bills you just need to pay for the rent the dormitory room fees and these are most times paid per semester you don't have to pay per month and also some schools do not have a cooking place so that means you will need to be buying food outside all the time if you consider cooking food um a way of saving money and you are staying in dorms it may not work for you because some dorms do not allow cooking so these are some of the things you need to consider if you are staying both 
inside the dormitory and outside i hope it gives you a clue on what to expect when coming to korea as a student your expenditure is going to vary of course it's going to be different if you are living in seoul or outside of seoul depending on where you buy your stuff you may be able to spend less or more but generally i hope this video has been helpful and given you a clue on what to expect and yeah let me know if you think korea has a high cost of living or you think it's just okay and i appreciate you watching as always and i'll see you in the next one bye